Hello, and welcome to another Register Kettle, your chance to hear about the news from the people that actually write it. And it's been a busy week for Microsoft users, not only from yesterday's outage, but also the Build Developer Conference has been going on this week, and it's been a very interesting one. Um, one hesitates to use the words like total recall, but I know, Richard, you've got your ranting trousers on about this. Um, so Microsoft has this, has this plan to screenshot every few seconds everyone's user date details can i mean this logically would be a bad idea but can you just give us some detail on it yeah sure uh, and i mean when you say screenshot uh, I've, I've seen it called snapshot and screenshot in microsoft's own documentation those are two different things anyway but let's give a screenshot i mean depending how depending how you read it and microsoft has not been clear so far with what exactly it's doing uh, it's going to take a snapshot or screenshot of your uh, active desktop every few seconds, store it, and then allow you to go back through it uh, to kind of put out what you were doing before. And I, it's one of those things. I mean, do you remember a little film came out about 25 years ago called The Phantom Menace? And when I watched that film, I wondered, <laughs> did no one speak to the filmmakers about this? This is, this is not good. That this was not a good <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and it's yeah. the same with with, with 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 Windows Recall. I mean, it's it it's appeared. Uh, I mean, I I don't think many of us knew it was coming. Uh, it's appeared as part of the Copilot Plus PC uh, announcement, which, which kind of has overshadowed Build somewhat. And it looks to me like it's almost like a a free for all for cyber criminals because, like again, I'm sure it's very secure. Microsoft has said that it's using encry encryption to ensure these snap these these snapshots it takes are are stored in a secure fashion. But if you look at what the cybersecurity world is saying, there's a lot of dis there's a lot of upset and distress over what this could mean. It's 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 not great. And I do wonder if somehow in Microsoft someone did, did, didn't say, hey, we should perhaps leave this a bit longer and think it through a bit more before before we launch it. But instead it's appeared in what I can kind of describe as kind of a almost a half-baked way, uh, which is yeah. you know, it's AI. Uh, but yeah, it's it's okay. yeah. <laughs> I think, um, I mean, like maybe they have to take the screenshots. I, I just, I, I, they probably did start out thinking this will be a great snapshot, like as in snapshot, as in snapshot of your system every so often, kind of like Mac OS's time machine. And I mean, that does have its uses. I always think that that's like a good use of technology to take. It's almost like taking regularish backups of what you've been doing. But the point of that is that it takes your files on your file system. So if I mess up a file, I can go back to this morning and recover it. But but it seems like they just kept adding stuff on top of it. Like, oh, let's log app, let's log app activity, let's log communications, let's log. Hey, let, uh, how do we how do we make the user interface for this? Let's take a screenshot every three seconds and <laughs> and bake that no, into it. It's, I mean, Microsoft is saying, oh, this is totally secure. You know, it's all stored on the local device. It's like, sure. yeah, that's totally secure, is it? You know? Yeah. No, well, but, well, to it, make it, make another uh, movie reference, you know, Jurassic Park, uh, Ian Malcolm's. Uh, or uh, <laughs> Jeff Goldblum's character uh, in Malcolm made the point that it's like your scientists were so concerned with what they could do, they never stopped and thought, should they? And it yeah, very yeah. much feels the yeah. same kind of thing where they're like, well, what if we did snapshotting and combine that with screenshots and optical character recognition? And it wouldn't be all that much more complicated to do. And now mm. we could recall all of these things with a you know a vector database and uh, a, a small large language model and. Uh, wait a minute. Did did anybody stop to think about whether this was a good idea in the first place? Yeah, and, I think at, and at a time yeah. when, and at a time when Microsoft has just been shouted at, has just been has just been yelled at by the U.S. government for being so insecure, for not knowing <laughs> how the how China broke into its cloud, for other security lapses on top of all the other the patching that they need to do every month. Like you've got. Yeah, it's 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 like they didn't stop to think. They, I mean, they just promised us. It's the reason why we didn't really give much coverage. I think we gave it like a few paragraphs when Microsoft recently uh, pledged that it was going to take security seriously. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, what's the point of that pledge if then, like a week or two later, you then say like, oh, you know what, we're going to build a keylogger into <laughs> into our operating system, but and we're going to. This is a keylogger. I mean, the most sophisticated keylogger, mind you. The world's most sophisticated. Yeah, it probably is that they. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you can trust Microsoft. Like you can, you can, um, yeah, it's probably like they've just got, they've just got infected by this um, LLM uh, large language model kind of hype, their own hype that they've generated. They've been eaten by their own hype because they were like, well, the good thing about an LLM is you can throw anything at it. You can throw PDFs, you can throw files, you can throw screenshots, uh, you can throw app activity and you can infer from it and you can use it to recall and search and all this kind of stuff. Um, but I don't think about the fact that 
which, yeah, as you say, like doing optical character recognition and being able to infer f- stuff from that, that's, that does sound great. Up until the point where you're s- storing screenshots of what I'm doing, every- right, You're entering a password into your password manager, trying to use best practices, and mm. it's taking screenshots of <laughs> <Could> you- <laughs> yeah. But th- this is the baffling <laughs> thing about it, though. Did no one, did, was there no one with the balls at Microsoft or, or the, the guts at Microsoft to say, look, guys, this is, oh, you know, folks, this is a really, really bad idea. It's going to turn around and bite us on the ass worse than Vista. Yeah, it's like being paparazzi by my own yeah. computer. And, I mean, see, uh, it's. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, I mean, do you think this kind of almost um, reeks of desperation on Microsoft's part because it, it needs people to buy AI PCs? You know, because Windows 11 mm-hmm. hasn't t- taken off; it's not gained the market share that they're, that from Windows 10. They said AI is the future, AI this, AI that, and so that they had to have some form of AI tool really quite soon because. I mean, Windows 10 goes out of support next year for many users. So they needed something to say, some AI story to tell. And this appears to be the big feature of the AI PCs. I mean, there's other ones, but this appears to be the big one. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. do, do, is, is this perhaps the best way to say that much something? It goes, and I think Tobias can speak more on this, but I'll say this. I think it goes even deeper than that in that Microsoft has a partnership with, with Qualcomm um, and uh, Qualcomm's approach to architecture is to take CPU cores and pair them with an AI accelerator, um, while at the same time, ARM, which designs the, the cores, the CPU cores, is trying to get everything, well, not everything, but it's trying to get as much as possible on the CPU. So it's trying to do, ARMS is adding AI acceleration to its CPU architecture, so you don't have to keep offloading to an accelerator all the time. You can just keep it on the CPU. And in fact, I think something like 70% of Android work AI workloads just run on the CPU cores anyway. So you've, mm-hmm. got, you've got the architecture going in that direction, but you've got Microsoft and Qualcomm betting on the, all this DPU and, and MPU stuff that they put inside their chip. So they have to make use of that. They've put it in silicon. They've spent years designing it. They have to come up with some reason to use it. You know, I'd... I'd hate for all of this AI stuff to be kicking off because Qualcomm needs a return on investment on its um, <laughs> on its MPUs that it's been designing. Yeah, there's always been this kind of symbiotic relationship between uh, the hardware vendors and Microsoft because I mean, in, unless you're Apple or you're you know one of the very small players like System76 that are building uh, Linux notebooks, um, it's and, and computers. I mean, like they all rely on each other. So if, if, you, if Microsoft wants to do something cool in software, it might need help from Qualcomm or Intel or AMD in order to accelerate that and make it viable without you know, killing the battery. Otherwise, people will just turn it off. So there's, mm-hmm. there's definitely that element to all of this. Um, but I think uh, Richard is right in that Microsoft really needs an excuse to sell all, more licenses. And that means they need to give people a reason to go buy a new computer. Um, to Chris's point, Qualcomm is doing some really interesting stuff with with their NPUs. Currently, uh, this partnership is happening because Intel and AMD are so far behind in that regard. Mm-hmm. Intel, mm-hmm. Will, the best they can manage is 10 tops. Uh, <laughs> uh, AMD can manage 16 tops. And Qualcomm is claiming 45. And Microsoft says you need a minimum of 40 to take advantage of these features. So there, there, there is some kind of symbiosis going there. So does that mean the Wintel Alliance is closed? No, I, I, I don't think so. Uh, so you know, the same day that Microsoft and Qualcomm had their special event, which, uh, mind you, we weren't invited to and weren't pre-briefed for, um, mm. and it was an in-person only event uh, to boot, uh, Intel came out and, and, and touted that they were going to have their next-gen Lunar Lake uh, mobile processors were going to do 100 tops, uh, for about four, or more than 100 tops, 45 from the NPU and a 60 from the GPU, uh, which then gets back to the whole question that Chris raised, which is, you know, it, you know, if you if you can do it efficiently in the GPU or the CPU, why even bother with an NPU in the first place? Hmm. Um, yeah. And also, and, uh, and also, it's pretty funny as well. Yeah, but they invited, they didn't invite us. Like they invited us to to some of build stuff. They invited us to like the cloud and kind of on the more enterprise side, but we weren't invited to the Copilot Plus PC side. Either because Microsoft really doesn't like us still, or Qualcomm doesn't like us still, or both. And uh, <laughs> what, what, what was funny was they probably didn't invite us because they felt that we would rip uh, Windows Recall apart, um, as it deserves to be. Um, and then the rest of the media did that anyway. So I'm glad that 
you know, everybody stopped and paused and said, this seems like a really stupid idea. Uh, because, I mean, you've got like this week where like, where ransomware is yet again using BitLocker against people. So this whole thing about, oh, you can encrypt it on your, your, your system. It's like, yeah, no doubt. And, and who's got the keys? Your local system. So it just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's, yeah. it, you know, you know what I mean? It's, it's, mm. if it's going to be encrypted locally, the key has to be kept locally or has to be able to be accessed by the user. And that means that malware on the system can access it as well. So it's not just a case of like, it's kind of like having just this ongoing rolling live backup system on your computer that, so that intruders can see through time into whatever you've been doing. It's just, it just seems sometimes some features, as you as we said, are just, cool but you should kind of not do them like you know it's it's like there needs to be some restraint there Mm -hmm. no i mean there's a there's a difference between move fast and break things and just break things i mean i know richard (laughs) you you, you're actually very you know you're you're very passionate on this front and that's probably a reason why they didn't invite you but yeah (laughs) let loose (laughs) i mean was there anything else that came up I mean, was there anything else that came up? It was something like Microsoft admitted that it had like 135 or so or more like Copilot offerings across its platform. And so what probably started out was like, oh, we'll just call it all Copilot. And so you will have this unified product for users to, to, to subscribe to and use. And in the end, it's now been fractured into 135 offerings. I, I, I mean, was there anything that really else stood out from Build? I mean, you described it as an AI fluff. <laughs> yeah, piece, I mean, in the comment piece, it, I, mean, I mean, I mean, I'd say that was pretty much it. it, it there was just a lot of AI stuff, a lot of a lot of copilot stuff. I mean, I, I defer to to Tobias in, in, in terms of uh, you know, these specifics, but it just felt like uh, I mean, I, I did a quick look at some of the the pre brief stuff, and you know, they barely mentioned Windows at all. And I, and I can remember these events back from the days of PDC and what have you, where there'd be a lot more really deep dive technical stuff, whereas this all felt much, much fluffier, much more, I wouldn't say low code because low code is important, but it did feel that this wasn't really a developer event anymore. It was becoming more of, mm. you know, it's, it's more of a AI, low code co-pilot. You can create these, these assistants to do, do these marvelous things, but really I want to know how the internals of the OS is, 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 is working. And it felt like it wasn't that event anymore. It should be called, yeah, it should be called Microsoft built. <laughs> not, Microsoft, not Microsoft build. Like, well, this is what we did. And you're yeah, going mean, to like yeah, it, I mean, <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah, build, yeah. Choice, I, mean, but yeah. It, I mean, in all seriousness, what they should do, I think, is perhaps consider having a third event because what we had this this week, it was, I mean, yeah, there, there were lots of things in there, but it wasn't build in terms of a developer event. It was for, if you want to leverage Copilot, if you want to, if you want to leverage AI, here's how, here's how you do it. But there wasn't enough, I thought, really, about, say, the .NET stuff, where they're going with that. There wasn't enough about, I mean, we, we did tease out bits and pieces around the WPF, but on the, on, on the whole, it didn't feel like the hardcore developer event that I've been used to in the past. Right, yeah. The most oh, well. thing I can say about this event was that the, it seemed like there was a very large push on moving Microsoft uh, to run on ARM and Microsoft native applications to run on ARM natively. So that was, I mean, it really gave the impression that Microsoft had basically flipped the operating system on its head and completely refactored it because they wanted to push ahead with this AI PC thing, but their traditional x86 partners weren't ready and they weren't going to wait around. And you yeah. see, I mean, Microsoft has done this thing, you know, tried to shift to ARM before. Do you think it's actually going to be successful this time? I, th- I think they need to get the developer buy-in. And I think some mm-hmm. of that, as I mentioned in, in my coverage, has been helped by the fact that uh, Apple began this journey almost four years ago. And so there's an awful lot of h- uh, high priority applications that have native ARM64 binaries out there. And so you just have to kind of lower the barriers for those developers, You know, give them a reason to go do the little bit extra effort they need to bring it to run on you know, Windows and actually do it. And, and there, you know, they did show a long list of applications that will, in short order, run natively on ARM. The problem up to this point is that the silicon available for Windows on ARM has not been particularly fast compared to what mm-hmm. Apple has been able to, to achieve. And a lot of it has had to, a lot of the software has had to run an emulation, which now Microsoft says they have a new emulation layer that is going to be much, much more performant for it legacy applications that haven't been migrated over just yet. And uh, Qualcomm's uh, Snapdragon X series chips, at least in benchmarks, 
look very favorable. Maybe not in terms of performance per watt when you're running them all out, but at least they're competitive. Can I ask, well, I mean, those, I'm... those benchmarks, were they purely for native apps or were they for emulated apps? Because one of the problems I've encountered with Windows Alarm before is uh, you could, as long as you were using nat native apps, I found that when, when, when Windows Alarm, you'd get great performance where it backed enough. As soon as you, you hit emulation, the battery life was absolutely, it, it, it would suffer severely. Hmm. Yes, and, and, and to be clear, that was also true of, of Apple Silicon in the early days as well, when the majority of applications weren't running natively. In terms of Microsoft's ben the benchmarks that Microsoft shared for, for their new Surface uh, uh, equipment running on Qualcomm's new chips, those were, for the most part, benchmarks running natively on, on ARM. They did claim okay. that the new emulation layer was about twice as performant as the old one compared to their last gen ARM surface, which, okay, so I, mean, I still snail. expect it's probably going to have maybe a 20, 30% overhead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. I mean, yeah. it's. I mean, just one other like quick thing is that what's funny about all of this is that it's going. It's that they want they've put all this effort into turning Windows on ARM, and they uh, I saw something where they they pre-briefed some um, some media about saying that you know they they've reworked Windows from the ground up or upside down, whatever they've done side to side <laughs> to to make it work on ARM a lot better, you know. But ultimately, with these shenanigans with Windows Recall, with their also with the the Cobalt one hundred. Uh, arm powered servers they have now in Azure. It's just all, it, I can just see a lot more people running Linux, you know, either in, either on the Azure cloud or people taking this, this arm, this, the, these arm PCs and being like, yeah, that's cool. Great. Let's just, I'm just going to put Debbie on it. I'm just going to put Fedora on it. I'm going to put Ubuntu on it because, uh, Qualcomm is upstreaming Linux support for those, for that hardware. So you'll eventually be able to run Linux on it anyway. Yeah, uh, that may be the way to go, but we're going to have to see. Honestly, build was a bit of a mishmash, but at the same time, recall is, well, one hesitates to make, make total recall jokes because the original film is a classic and the reboot is an absolute disaster, but it's looking like an absolute disaster at the moment. But uh, we shall see how it develops. Anyway, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us on this on this week's Kettle. You can get the audio version, should you so prefer, on your usual podcast channels, and we'll be back next week. <laughs>